Hello Violets! In this episode of the Psychus Handbook series, we will be going in-depth about the Psychinetic's Ascendant Blaze feat. Before we dive into the juicy stuff, let's recap the basics. When you have Ascendant Blaze selected, whenever you use Psychinetic's Wrath, you will use up all your warp charges and apply stacks of Soul Blaze to all enemies hit based on the number of charges you had. While you have Ascendant Blaze, you have a 10% chance of gaining a warp charge when enemies die from your Soul Blaze effects. With the basics sorted out, let's look into fully utilizing the potential of this feat. Starting with number 1, reaching the Soul Blaze breakpoints. As Ascendant Blaze damage is determined by how many warp charges you can hold, you need to think if you want to pick up warp battery that lets you hold up to 6 instead of 4. Now whether you take warp battery would depend on the difficulty you play at and what you want to use Ascendant Blaze for. While you can absolutely use it to delete hordes in a pinch, because Ascendant Blaze acts as a pocket napalm that can go through walls and cover, it's excellent for dealing with patrols of shooters, a Psyker's worst enemy in my opinion. And so without diving into too many numbers, the number of stacks you need to take out a patrol of shooters is as follows. On Malice difficulty, you need 4 stacks. On Heresy, you need 5, and Damnation, you need 6. That means, if you regularly play on Heresy and above, and want to take out shooters with Ascendant Blaze, you will need to take Warp Battery to get enough charges to do so. The next thing you should know, is that you can increase the tick damage of your Ascendant Blaze. You do this by casting Ascendant Blaze while having a weapon in hand that has a plus armor type damage perk, like damage against flak or unarmored, instead of casting from Brain Burst in your open hands. Casting a buffed up Ascendant Blaze allows you to push the damage further, and makes it possible to take out both gunners, those are the enemies with the machine guns, and shotgunners, although it is more difficult to do so on harder difficulties. The following are gunner brick points. Take your time to look at the damage values you need to kill gunners outright from Ascendant Blaze alone. Now, with that being said, if you happen to get warp charges while your Ascendant Blaze is ticking away, it can further increase the damage done, and might just be enough to take out those pesky gunners that survive on 1 HP. If you're still with me, here's the TLDR if you want to make Ascendant Blaze effective at killing. First, have a weapon with plus 25% flak. It can be any weapon, your melee or your range, as long as you take it out before you cast Ascendant Blaze. Second, if you want Ascendant Blaze to still be useful at Heresy and above, take Warp Battery. And third, don't be afraid to cast Ascendant Blaze even if it's not fully charged up to meet the breakpoints. Some damage is often better than no damage, and Soul Blaze enemies are lit up for your team to see, making them easier to spot and kill, especially in dark areas of a map or during the blackout condition. In fact, there's a chance those Soul Blaze enemies might receive damage while on fire and die from the tick damage, giving you a chance at getting warp charges back. This leads us nicely into point number 3. You can get warp charges from killing Soul Blaze enemies with any weapon. That's right, although the tooltip says that you will only gain warp charges from an enemy that dies from your Soul Blaze effects, in reality, they only really need to take one tick of damage to be considered affected by Soul Blaze. This means, as long as an enemy has suffered a single tick of Soul Blaze damage, killing them any which way does have a chance to give you a warp charge. While this sounds good, there is a very big however that follows. Killing Soul Blaze enemies with anything that isn't Soul Blaze damage, like from your Pagata staff or Ascendant Blaze damage, appears to have a much lower chance of actually giving you a warp charge. I'm talking instead of 10%, it's more like a 1%, maybe even less. I know this because I spent probably way too much time testing this out and from my findings, there is a very clear difference in how often I get warp charges from killing an enemy with Soul Blaze as compared to killing them after one tick of damage with a melee. Nevertheless, even if it's only 1% instead of 10, that's still another passive way you can gain warp charges, which is still a win in my book. It's just not something I would advise actively trying to do. You're much better off using your Brain Burst or Pagatas to get warp charges. This brings us to our last point of Ascendant Blaze and is potentially the best hidden part of it. You can gain warp charges from other psychers killing things with Soul Blaze. Although Ascendant Blaze's tooltip reads that you need enemies to die by your Soul Blaze effects, you can actually gain warp charges from other psychers killing enemies with Soul Blaze too, most commonly done with a Pagata stuff. In this example, I'm running with no force weapons and I don't have any other means of generating warp charges other than using Brain Burst or Ascendant Blaze. Facing this horde, I let my friend, who is running Pagata stuff without Ascendant Blaze, kill the horde. As you can see, I've hit my maximum warp charge stack at 6. Now assuming this is intentional, knowing this fact in addition to the changes made to the warp charges in the last patch really opens up the build combinations for psychers in the team. Because in a team of at least 2 psychers, as long as one person is running a Pagata staff, everyone else can run Ascendant Blaze effectively and use other staffs like Surge or Traba or even Guns as well. So feel free to experiment if you have a friend with you. With that, those are the 4 important things you need to know about Ascendant Blaze to unlock its full potential on your psyker. If you've enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. If you want to see more of these Dark Tide Masterclass breakdowns, consider subscribing as I'll be doing them for all classes as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Violets.